Art Nook interviews. Um, this is the Art Nook, and today, if you want to share your name and pronouns. Um, my name is Kels Moylan, my pronouns are they, them. Cool, I'm Cleo, and my pronouns are also they, them. So, you're an artist in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. You've been in Tacoma since you were how little? Oh, four and a half or something. As far as I'm concerned, this is like where I've always lived. So. Very cool. Yeah. What emotions and ideas do you aim to express in your artwork? This also goes back to Tacoma a little mm -hmm. bit. And like the world and the universe. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> what but, else is there to be inspired by? <laughs> yeah. um, I'm really in, uh, intrigued by artists that like go into absurd absurdity like mm -hmm. try to emphasize absurdity do so by like recognizing absurdities within mm -hmm. our yeah. world and in Tacoma I think we have a lot of that too my goal lately like in the past couple of years has been to represent the body mm -hmm. as um, more than like how we have like narrowed this idea of what a body is as in attached to like human and humans and human interaction um and seeing a body more as like one taking a, a step further animal right and then a yeah. step further like creature on earth or not even creature like thing on earth yeah. living whatever but like broader and broader and broader i'd like to like pull it further into like seeing the body as matter mm -hmm. and matter that has similarities and relations and like a sort of divinity that is also embodied within everything else mm -hmm. that is so broad yeah. but it is so like truly like kind of at the core of a lot of my like more recent work mm -hmm. i'm kind of taking apart the idea that humans are so separate from the rest of the world yeah or like what we project on the bodies like mm -hmm. how we project gender race onto bodies and further being a fat person um how i've had to like detach moral value mm -hmm. to my body yeah um i think it i think everyone would benefit from seeing their body less as this tool um for its social interaction and more for just existing and, and yeah. recognizing that it's just what's there you know most definitely yeah yeah do you have a real life situation that has inspired your artwork yes okay so I have a painting in the stairwell right now that is kind of like a landscape with bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, truly inspired by a road trip that I took in 2020 um, to Idaho. Uh, but going through eastern Washington and Oregon, um, the hills and mountains that are up there are just one constant. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that they show that they have stretch marks in really amazing ways yeah. um, that like while I was driving through I was like this is just so amazing these are literal this is a body like this is a body of land like it genuinely is a body and also that was when I was like realizing you know mountains and hills are formed from tectonic plates and stuff like smushing and converging anyways documentation of the world moving mm -hmm. which is not something I can see very much yeah I mean I can because of sand and like other small like more movable versions of a mountain mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah that that trip in particular really like I don't know what it was that like opened my eyes to that so much but mm -hmm. I like could not stop seeing like the sides of people's bodies and like people laying down mm -hmm. over this terrain on such a massive scale and yeah what is an artist that you admire and why um there are so many uh <laughs> there are so so many mm -hmm. um to name a few uh jacob von loon sally hewitt zetislav bekskinski um recently i've been really 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 uh in love with red hands work who's a photographer from China who passed in 2019, I believe. His uh, work deals a lot with the new body. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of with some of what I'm doing, he deals a lot with like undefining the body sort of, or unattaching the body to um, sexuality and stuff and mm -hmm. within China, but also introducing the body to sexuality within China and like trying to um, 
recognize the social and political like place that he's in and then still making the artwork that he's passionate about even after being arrested and like having his artwork taken offline in China and all this mm -hmm. he like continued to represent his friends and the trust that he has with his friends and the way that like he can be playful but also serious and like it's it's really his work is really amazing do you have any tips to share about the medias that you use so i'll go into painting at first mm -hmm. so painting is what i'm majoring in at plu right now um i'm getting my bfa in it uh, I oil paint and I acrylic paint for the most part. I think acrylic is probably the first one that people should turn to. My recommendation is to really play with the medium. You can like make it chunky if you want. You can water it down and treat it like watercolor if you'd like. Um, it's plastic based so you can like get pretty wacky with it and it's not nearly as dangerous to like be exposed to. I would recommend um, getting mixing mediums for acrylic, especially if you'd like it to appear more like oil paint. I highly recommend the Golden Slow Dry Medium. Um, it also makes it appear more like oil paints if you're trying to go for more traditional work, but you can really do a lot with acrylic. With oil paints, I also recommend playing with different mediums. Um, lichen is really great. Um, I use turpentine a lot. And then for, as far as techniques, I really recommend Having clean brushes, um, cleaning my brush always helps me out, especially when I want to blend because um, it doesn't introduce any new thing. Mm -hmm. um, also working in layers is a really big tip for me. Um, I usually start with underpaintings and then I like work in sessions and layer little by little. Mm -hmm. um, then you can really like take advantage of transparencies, Most which I think looks really awesome when you're layering colors on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, it adds a lot of depth. Um, a lot of my newer pieces really, really utilize layers and transparency mm -hmm. to create cool colors. Mm -hmm. um, that's painting. Nice. Colored pencils, my big, big love. Just really recommend packing it on. Scrub and scrub and scrub and like layer, especially if you're using Prismacolor pencils. They're really waxy and you can work in small um, layers. So just like putting them on over top of each other really adds a lot of depth that like almost gives it a painting like appearance sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Have you ever used like a alcohol marker or other things to blend them? Or like what do you use to blend the colored pencils? Usually I, um, so if I'm working in like bright colors, I'll use two bright colors and then I'll try to find like a, slightly muted like combination of the two um to blend them together and like a lot of the times if i'm like really adding a lot of pressure for the vibrant colors and then i go in with a muted color and i use less pressure but to blend them together the wax literally heats up and like redisperses itself in such an amazing way and then it fills in all the gaps that the the waxiness of the pencil didn't catch onto the paper. Um, I think it makes a really big difference to like, like really like go in, like mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. like fill the paper because it the wa like the actual way that it sits on the paper is um, really engaging to me mm -hmm. in a way that painting is. Yeah, yeah. With graphite drawing, um, I recommend using your eraser to draw. I don't think enough people do that. Draw with your eraser and like consider the shapes that are happening. And so ways that you can bust out shapes with pencil, but also take away and be subtractive with erasers is really interesting, or er, is really intriguing to me and a helpful tool. Um, also here they sell um, erasers that are like pencils essentially, and they sell them really thin. So recommend that for like detail work but also for like working with hair, doing little highlights all over a little face or something like that. Woo, <laughs> woo, yeah. Nice. What is your favorite color combo? I think my favorite color combo is purple and orange mainly because of sunsets. Mm -hmm. I have other favorite color combos too. Uh, like I really love uh, like a chartreuse and a rust together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what organizations do you belong to in Tacoma? Yeah, this one's going to be pretty brief. 
uh, Tacoma, Art, or Tacoma Art Museum Workers United. I work at the Tacoma Art Museum. My coworkers and I are unionizing right now. Um, still waiting on recognition from the board. Um, still waiting on union busting to halt. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Serve the People Tacoma is mm -hmm. a big one. I uh, am not as active right now because I'm working and in school all the time, but uh, they're wonderful. They bring meals to people. Um, and then I'm going to name drop a couple that I'm not a part of. The People's Assembly um, is a great resource. They're on Instagram, on other things as well. Um, Matisse Beauty is also yes. a really great resource. Uh, she's doing so much for the community and always advocating. So if you're looking for like how to make Tacoma better, and ideally, like, you know, if we're all working, make the world better. <laughs> What's the best advice you've received? Art or non-art related? Yes. Uh, okay, I can, can I do both? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, art related, two-dimensional related for the most part too. Mm -hmm. um, ah, three-dimensional as well. Mm -hmm. Take a step back from your work. See it from different angles, see it from different perspectives. Take pictures of it, because it mm -hmm. looks different on a screen too. Literally hold it up to a mirror and look at it in a mirror. It will look different. Mm -hmm. Hold it upside down, even if it's something that is representational, because a lot of my work is abstract, so it still looks cool and yeah. makes sense upside down. But even if it's like a portrait or something, mm -hmm. hold it upside down and see how it reads, because composition still matters. To yeah. me, it, composition is like a really big part of artwork for me, because it's like, it kind of represents a lot of like, just a feeling that you get, and this mm -hmm. nuance that I'm intrigued by. Um, one gives you more control also while you're painting, but gives you a different perspective that I think helps you understand what you're looking at. For non-art related, mm -hmm. freak what you feel. Mm -hmm. Freak what you feel. Nice. Chase desire. Yeah. Like, chase desire. Mm -hmm. Your intuition tells you a lot, and it's usually pretty, like, yeah. Nice. Trust your intuition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. What is your favorite thing that we carry in store? I gotta say, it's probably that tiny little eraser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, where can the hashtag ACS community find your work? I am a student at the Pacific Lutheran University. Um, I'm in what is essentially my senior year, and I'm in a thesis show opening April 19th at five or six p.m. in the Ingram Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, it's my work and a lot of my peers work and I've been working on this uh, stuff for like many many months now. Um, it's really meaningful to me. It deals a lot with matter, the body, continuums, transness, mm -hmm. um, all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that should be pretty fun. It'll be on display through part of May, I believe, but it might not be accessible all the time. So come to the opening reception if you'd like to see a lot of really cool local young artwork. Yeah, we'll be there. Um, I'm also on Instagram, uh, at starpuddle.kells. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to our first Art Nook interviews. Yay! Yay! Um, this is gonna be a series. It'll be happening hopefully around once a month. Um, usually centered around the artists that we have in the stairwell or a local artist that's making really cool changes in our community, um, or just making really cool stuff. Um, so if you have anyone you want to be a part of one of these, like, go ahead and put them in the comments. We can get in touch. It can happen. This is starting. <laughs> <laughs> so. Cleo's very friendly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, and hope you have a good day. And I hope you have a good day. I hope I have, I have, I have a good day too, and I hope you have a good day. What well, thanks? I hope you have a good day. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>